Hi, I'm Janet Engel, the 5-Minute Read Maker. Listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, can you go ahead and click subscribe, please? Um, and maybe even like notify, that way you always find out right away when I drop a new episode. And uh, also, the uh, YouTube algorithm loves me, which means that more people can discover this channel and uh, make better reads. So, you know, everyone wins. Today's uh, Read Repair Shop episode looks at Anne's reads. It's a little longer than usual because I actually go back in for a day two uh, look at them um, and really find some success. I think you'll find it particularly interesting because uh, Anne's reads came off of a Reads and Stuff profiler, so the, the bulk of the early scrape is already done by machine before we started, and yet there was still plenty of work to do. So um, I hope that you'll find this super interesting. And you'll see, I think, the importance of persistence. Um, I, I call myself the five minute read maker, and indeed I can make a read of mine in five minutes, but uh, really trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with Anne's reads. It took me a little while, um, but with persistence we were able to make uh, at least two of them become real reads. Uh, so for you too, don't give up. There's a, there's a read in there very, very often. Uh, it's worth continuing to scrape. Hi Anne. So I'm looking at your reads here and I sort of love them. So you had sent me um, three reads one, uh, as you know, came directly off of your Reads and Stuff profiler with no actual work done on it from you. This one came off your Reads and Stuff profiler and then you did some work on it. And this one is one that you've scraped entirely by hand. So I'm going to start over here and just talk through um, this profile itself and then how I would, what I would do next to it. Um, you have a, in this profile, you have a really, really clear and lovely transition area from the heart into the tip. It's really, really cleanly done. You have, there's a really strong spine right up the center of the tip, and there's very, very strong width um, right here on the sides. And I think that's actually partly because your uh, your sides are not perfectly. Uh, you don't. You haven't cut the ears cleanly off. So uh, you mentioned that this is the tabito shape and I am hypothesizing that uh, the tabito shape was shaped by hand because there are very clearly ears that I can feel up here in this part of the reed. Um, and the first thing I want to do is get rid of those and make sure that the sides of the tip are the very thinnest part. Because here's what I've got right now. I do have a crow, um, but I, there's, I also have a leek. I also have quite a, a substantial leek, actually, um, right up in the, in the heart and windows area. And so I really want to see what we can do about that. My first agenda is to make sure that the sides of the tip are the thinnest part and that this... Uh, and. I'm going to figure out how to deal with this really, really strong spine in the middle of the tip. Um, I don't want to take it all away right away because we do want some stability in the middle of the tip. But I think the first agenda is the sides. And so as I scrape here, I'm really making sure that I weight the knife toward that right hand side, so I'm trying to scrape only the rightmost grain or two. And I'm working all the way up to the very, very corner and just, uh, yes, to the tip of the tip and making sure that the corner is the thinnest part. But you'll see the quality of cane I'm taking off. It's very, very uh, little. Let's do the left side, same game. I'm weighting my knife more toward the tip so that it's just taking that leftmost grain. And I'm really trying not to get involved with the spine, although I notice when I hold this reed up to the light and dip it again in the water because it's uh, spreading a little bit, um, that I am, I haven't touched the spine 
but I've brushed it a little bit and it's becoming a little bit less prominent. Same thing on the other side. Sides and corners are the most important part. And even though my knife is angled really strongly over to the right hand side, you can see that uh, half a centimeter away from the wood that I'm trying to get, my knife also just touches that spine. And honestly, I think that's fine. I don't want to do any more than just touch the spine. I'm never going to like go into the middle and scrape it, but I don't mind just nicking it a little bit. Okay, so that's definitely the first thing I'm doing is the sides and corners and Immediately, I, I think you'll notice that the, um, the crow purified itself a little bit. I'm going to want to clip a little bit because this reed is still up at 71, um, but I'd love to be able to get that crow down a little bit more before I do that. And so I'm looking in the uh, back in the windows and it's interesting. I see so much bark here. and less here on the right. And it's a similar situation on the left, uh, on the, the other blade. I noticed that I'm, I'm drawing the scraped out area here. But it's very different on the right hand side than on the left. So what I think I'm gonna want here is a little bit more symmetry <laughs> in the window. Um, your profile seems to really wanna take um, a different amount and a different shape of bark off um, in the windows of the reed. But what I want, let's go like here-ish. Let me see if that's actually 60. Yeah. Um, I would like these two windows to be more symmetrical back here. So allowing myself to just scrape up to the line I do want to leave bark on the side, but I don't want to leave a ton of bark on the side. Same on the other. And what I think I'm doing in the windows is um, opening up the sound of the reed a little bit and allowing my mouth to manage the opening of the reed a little bit and hopefully lowering the crow so I can clip right away. I haven't touched the bark in the heart yet, but I will get there. My crow is down a little, but not very much. And so the third thing I'm gonna do before I go any further is I'm just gonna arc my knife all the way across the heart, very gently, but making sure that the sides of the heart are the thinnest part. And when I do this, I'm using barely any pressure. You can tell actually, because my, uh, my index finger, the one which I've often described as the strength of the gesture, the one where I'm, when I'm scraping at the tip is actively pushing that reed back at my knife all the time. When I scrape in the heart, my finger is just almost disengaged. I'm just sort of arcing over and looking for smoothness. Okay. Now that crow is definitely down. So I'm going to clip a tiny bit. And put it on the oboe. much yet with the specifics of this read, if that makes sense. Um, I basically just took what the profiler gave us um, and finished that by taking off um, the thickness at the very sides and corners of the tip, by taking off bark in the heart, by making sure that the windows were symmetrical. I'm going to go back on 
back in now um, because although the reed is vibrating now and it's playing pretty pleasantly I feel like it's very very stuffy still and so I really think there's a lot of bulk in the tip that I don't really want um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in even just a little bit more right at that gutter of the rooftop and believe it or not I'm just doing the same thing again I'm working on the outside and the very tip of the tip on the right on the left and I'm still not really engaging with that spine that your profiler intentionally leaves in the middle of the tip I'm not avoiding it entirely my knife still touches it and it's definitely coming down and becoming a little bit more an organic part of this tip but I am not um, scraping it per se I've lost my crow but I like the uh, the beep and the resistance a little better so let's clip see if the crow comes back figure it out in a minute I really will this read sounds really pretty and it feels really nice um, your tabito shape that you've been telling me about seems like it's pretty wide especially down here I'm not used to having this much uh, uh, sort of beefiness down at the throat area um, and I'd like this to just be a little bit freer so I'm gonna work the windows a tiny bit more and just a little bit of a smooth scrape through the heart but basically I think this is a pretty nice read no crow got a beautiful sound um, and the the if there's a problem it's just that I feel like there's a, a lack of focus because of the of the uh, width of the reed down here but what that translates to is a really pleasant sort of diffuse sound so I don't hate it I'm gonna set this guy aside for a minute because I feel like um, at this point he is a perfect Joe reed a perfect like basic reed that if I were to tweak a little bit more at the corners of the tip and break in for a day or two um, would probably feel really really comfortable now we're gonna come around to these reeds that you sorry I'm re-soaking because apparently it's very dry in here today these reeds which you have worked on now this uh, reed you said was the Liang shape which does make sense it feels a little a little bit um, more flared right in this region um, and maybe not quite as wide up top uh, I can see how you've done basically the same thing that I have done in trying to get the corners and sides of the tip to be the thinnest part but I don't think you've quite gotten there here on this blade it's looking pretty good as I as I brush my knife over it I can't take anything else but on the left I definitely find a little bit of thickness out toward the tip here on my other blade same story the right hand side feels really good and I know you're left-handed but I observe that again on the left there's a good big chunk that you're not quite finding I'll be interested to see if that carries through on your third read as well but okay so that's the first thing I noticed um, I do notice that your scrape of this tip has taken all of that spine material out um, whereas the the coming off the profiler there was a lot of wood right here um, currently on this read there is not um, and it's not um, 
I, I think that the spine that the profile leaves is a little over aggressive. Um, but I don't think you want zero thickness in the middle of your tip. I think in an ideal world, we've got a little bit of a of some ghosts ghostly thickness in that area. So just something to pay attention to. We don't really have a crow, but now that we've got corners of the tip uh, thinner, let's see how we play. Whew. It, I'm not finding the leak, but it feels like a leak, right? That lowest register should be working better than it is. Um, as I play this read, I feel like I'm super aware of the overlap. Um, it seems like a more aggressive overlap than maybe we want. I see the same thing on your read number three, but not as much on your read number two. So uh, I have a question, therefore. Um, when you wound this read originally, did it feel like it had quite as aggressive an overlap, in which case maybe just be a little bit more careful as you wind to keep these as, as uh, keep the blades as tight together as you can. We do want the overlap, we, we like it, but it's kind of a lot and I feel like maybe that's where we're losing a little bit of, of responsiveness. Um, but response has certainly suffered, so I'm going to try to polish your very bulky heart down a little bit from the left all the way across, thinking about letting the sides be thinnest. And see what that does. Whoo! Dropped the crow uh, mightily. where your response is because the th tip seems thin enough and I don't feel a leak but once I get down to that low C I can't find it again what is going on haven't even touched the windows yet and I want to I mean it is true Oh, hello. Okay, here's a thing. On this blade, your rooftop uh, on the right-hand side seems to start at about si 65 and a half, and on the left it's a little bit higher. On this blade, it's reversed, and on the right-hand side, your rooftop is all the way up at 67. Um, and if your profiler is if your profiler is making your rooftops and, and tips that erratic, that's something to look at. I don't think it's the case because this one seems much more even and symmetrical. Um, so I'm either going to hypothesize that you shoved this guy onto the machine too far, or that you, uh, or that something else happens that happens, that you, uh, remade this read in a way that was not thoroughly symmetrical. Now, so what I'm doing here is lowering the rooftop. What you saw me do is, yes, I did take that corner off there, and I'm not proud of that. And it could be that that ends up being fatal, in which case I will send you a replacement read. But I'm still trying to figure out why this guy is not responding at all down low. Why is there no crow? Why is it so weird? It's got a nice beep. It feels like it ought to be a reed, right? Again, I'm going to say again, I don't feel the leak when I put this reed to my mouth in playing position. Wait. 
it's leaking way, way up at the very, very tip, but not lower down. So that really shouldn't be the problem. And yet there is a problem. I'm going to go to the windows. Um, what I notice about your scrape in the windows is that I see like a line there, 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 here, 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 here. Um, so I just, I'm getting the impression that your knife really wants to catch as you scrape in this area. So here's what I do. I really want to think about my knife as pulling cane off rather than pushing. So I start it behind vertical, try to bring it smoothly forward to vertical. Um, I just took out most of those little notches, but if you have more trouble than that getting them, you could take your knife straight into the notch, sort of lay it down, your knife, and gently chip it forward. That's a way to think about those notches too. Okay, and my only thought as I'm looking at this reed, looking at it in the light too, it could be that our heart has just gotten too thin as, a, as you were working or as I was working. We still don't really have a crow. When I went into the windows, um, this read got dramatically better. And I believe that that is because um, my scraping in the windows made the heart think it was thicker. Now I've got a low crow and I can clip a little, which may help to take the uh, drama out of that corner that I lost for you. That's a crow, it's a little bit low. I'm gonna clip one more time. There's a crow. The response itself is definitely not amazing, but this read came together a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, if I had to guess, I would say that the response issue is definitely partly due to the, uh, the overzealous cut I made up on this corner and probably partly due to the, uh, sorry, just fixing the corner there, um, overzealous cut that you made over on this side before it ever got to me. Um, and between that and the dramatic overlap on top, you can see, I think, that there's actually a, a big gap between the corner I took, I know, um, and the edge here. But the fundamental problem with this read, I think, what did we discover? Um, that the rooftop was super asymmetrical and that the windows really hadn't been scraped out. They'd been scraped at. I definitely saw your, your knife strokes all over the place. But what I'm looking for in the windows is really a nice contrast between the thinness right here and the bulk of the heart just above it. That's what I'm going for. Do a little bit more of that. I might be able to clip again, but I definitely want to get onto your third read too. response in this read and it keeps not being forthcoming and I really believe that's just about the corners up here so I'm gonna put this guy aside for now I love the sound of it I really like this Liang shape 
Um, the work that you did was not bad work, but I think that my um, concerns mostly have to do with how um, aggressively thin you got in the tip, in the middle of the tip of the reed without actually, um, without actually making it thin enough at the corners to speak. Okay, so there's that. Here's your read number three. I'm dipping it. Um, the immediate difference that I see between this read and the other two, this is the one that you did by hand and didn't put through the pro profiler. The most immediate thing that I see is that it's very short. It looks overwound. I don't think it is. I did do this measurement already. And I don't believe that it is overwound. But the overall length of this guy is 69 already. Um, he just looks stubby and he's extremely open, which is probably something we can solve in the windows. <laughs> he's got a high crow, which is not, un not unexpected because of how short he is. And I can't really get any response going. Okay. I believe that your tip is too short and it's too thin in the middle again. I think this profile serves you well by leaving that really strong spine in the center. Um, somehow without it, you're allowing your knife to really encroach in the middle of the reed. So as you work, I would just make really sure that every scrape you're orienting, I know you're left-handed, so you have to like mirror image this to yourself, but you're orienting the right hand this way with your weight uh, on the handle of the knife. You're orienting your your other side here with your weight at the tip of the knife so that every scrape up at the tip of the reed is oriented in two dimensions, both outward and upward. All right, to get some response here, I believe we need to shorten, uh, shorten the heart, lengthen the tip, even though the thing is already short. I don't think we have a chance of getting this going without uh, a little bit more vibrating tip. So I'm gonna pull back about half a millimeter. I'm cutting in gently, scooping it out, and then trying to just catch and smooth that those rightmost and leftmost few grains of tip. Um, here again, I'm feeling a little bit of extra bulk on the left-hand side. So that is a thing I would definitely look at in your scrape. Make sure that when you're building that rooftop and working your way up the side, you're really conscious of that very, very edge. Okay, let's see what that did. But now I've got a crow. It's a little bit low, but it's crowing. It's a lot low. Put it on the oboe. Okay, so you hear that um, edge, especially as we get up to the highest register. That, I think, is about having thinness in the middle of the tip. So again, keep your knife to the sides. But the response got really good when we pulled those corners back. Um, and what I tried to do, because your read is already short, your rooftop looked like this. And I just tried to do that without really impacting this point where the, the top of the tip was. So I just steepened your rooftop, pulled back the sides, and we got response right away. I don't really want to touch the heart because the response and the resistance feel pretty good. But again, I see some like chipping all the way through that heart. 
and I'm just going to smooth it a little tiny bit. Making sure that the left and right sides of the heart are the thinnest part, arcing across very gently. But I am going to dig out the windows a little bit because it worked so well on the previous read. So the line at the bottom of the heart for me is about 60 millimeters and I just want my knife to go smoothly through the cane till I get there and I brush it away. Okay, dip that. Low crow, so I'm going to ju clip just a hair. Again, that will also have the result of making the corners look a little less ratty, so we like that. We lost response, so I'll deal with that in a second, but listen to the nice sound of this read. some notes, C naturals and Fs, that are really jumping sharp on this read. I think the whole thing may be overall a little bit high, too, um, which could just be because it's quite, quite short. I love having a good long runway um, when I work on a read. I start things a little longer than I mean them to end up, and I would wish for that length on this guy, too. And literally all I'm doing now is I'm looking for a little more response and I'm looking for it at the sides and corners of the tip. Drop the crow again. Let me play it before I clip. The pitch of those weird notes, um, the C's and the F's, is still definitely sitting up. Um, and I notice on this read the same thing that I did on this, where the the overlap, even though you're overlapped on the correct side for a left-handed person, um, seems very dramatic. Um, and as a result, the, the opening is a little bit affected. So my overall advice would be, as you're winding, let's be really careful about trying to make that overlap uh, the, the, in the direction that you have it, but more uh, delicate if possible, more like what you've got on this orange read. Um, you have a little bit of a tendency to avoid the left hand side of the tip of the tip. That's a thing that, that uh, will help you with s symmetry. On both of those reads I think I pulled your rooftop back a little bit to help get those sides to be the thinnest part and to help with um, response. And on both of these reads, I did a fairly dramatic amount of work in the windows to help the heart think that it's big, um, to balance out the read and to open up the sound. Um, and I really liked the result of that. All right, I'm feeling psyched to get back at this blue one. And the biggest thing that's going on with it is this total lack of response, right? I can barely get it to beep. Um, and it just feels like there's too much strength at the sides and not enough length in the tip. And I'm, I'm still, of course, I'm still really bothered by the, the overlap. I'm gonna go ahead and try to lengthen that tip again. And 
and thin so I'm pulling back the rooftop a little bit and making sure that I'm orienting outward toward the sides. It's interesting, this one feels harder to me. Uh, this side, the side without your bead, so your upper blade, feels harder to me than the other. So I may work in the heart a little bit there. All right, let's see what that did. All right, the crow is low. But that is a working read, a, a responding read at least. Mm. Dramatically better there. frustrated Anne because I can't find response in this read and I'm gonna try I'm actually gonna try Teflon tape um, not because you're leaking at the thread because I don't think you are but because maybe if I can wrap it snugly enough and then I can use this tape to force the blades of the reed to overlap a little bit less. So it's the same thing that I might do with um, that I might do with wire on an English horn reed, but this is not an English horn reed. Starting here, I'm going to try real hard to avoid using wire on an oboe reed. That feels a little off-brand for me, you know. So I'm really sort of forcing the issue with my finger and thumb of where I want this overlap to be and I'm wrapping it pretty tightly against the overlap that you had. Let's see what that did. tip I can make it work it is so funny to me like I don't see any obvious reason that the response should be this bad and yet it just is and I'm frustrated with this read because I th think I can do better but I don't see where or how going back in on this upper blade and I'm just remaking the transition from tip into heart. Do it on both blades. And the fact is I'm just like throwing spaghetti at the wall at this point because I haven't been able to think of any uh, obvious course of action here that feels better than <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> Dropped the crow, gonna clip again. I'm gonna clip one more time. There's a read in there. How did we get there? Um, eventually, I feel like with this read, I just got frustrated enough to dig in and really cut the um, the transition from the heart directly into the tip. Um, I think I'd been sort of uh, easing my way around it, trying to not um, do too much, trying to not re-sculpt this read too much. In fact, I've brought it down from, I don't remember what the measurement was before, but that rooftop is solidly at 65 now. Your overall length is at 70. 
um, lower blade your rooftop is down at 64 so like I really did br pull this down quite a lot it's not as short as your short read it's not too far off from it but suddenly after remaking that tip what four times five times um, it really came together um, I think the Teflon tape definitely helped to modify that overlap so it wasn't so dramatic but mostly I just kept going I scraped and clipped and scraped and clipped and scraped and clipped kept kept trying to drop the crow lengthen the tip and eventually that turned into a real read hey I actually feel good about that thanks for encouraging me to go back in and, and look at it um, I'm gonna re-tackle this orange guy as well and here's my question he's uh, sorry before I scrape let me play it it's feeling really tubby to me uh, really like not very responsive and quite heavy down in this area and that's how it feels when I play it too I want to see if I can make some of the same magic on this read that I did on the other um, for me and I know that this is a shape that you really like for me it feels just too broad right there and an observation is that uh, this is the case on all of these I think but it feels the most pronounced on this one as your thread goes up toward the top of the tube right here in the last like three three winds worth of thread it seems to flare as though the um, uh, as though the reed is wearing a big like woolly turtleneck that that flares out at the top and I wonder what would happen to the focus of the reed and to the um, to the focus and to the ease of the reed if you kept it snugged in a little bit more right at the top of the tube that's the first thing I wonder then the second thing I wonder is how are we gonna get response to be better on this reed and I'm gonna do exactly what I just did I'm gonna bring that rooftop back half a millimeter from where it was really paying attention to that scoop it comes from the thick heart right into the thin tip and then I'm taking it up all the way to the corner and even though I did this yesterday it's notice there's noticeably a lot of cane still in this tip I imagine you can see this coming off and I think when we get that going here other blades same thing a little more cut and significantly more wood off of the side and corner of the tip oh my gosh that's so beautiful and beautiful little polish little polish and then let's see what we've got <laughs> definitely um, a better response a slightly easier crow tiny clip tiny messy clip leakage here on the sides I don't remember whether I talked about that yesterday or not um, I want to say that yesterday when I worked on this I scraped in the sides of the heart to try to take care of that leaking but I still feel it a little bit right up in this area and that's where um, I feel like our response is a little bit lacking um, and it's a little hard to deal with uh, leaks that are this high that are up in the in the windows and heart area I don't see anything wrong that you did in your uh, well of course you didn't scrape this was <laughs> this was my scrape I don't see anything wrong that I did um, in the scrape to cause that which makes me think that again this may have been a wind issue um, to where you your uh, the sides of your tip 
the sides of your of your reed um, just got a little bit buckled because of something that happened down in here. But this is a nice read. I really like the stability. Um, I think that extreme stability is a part of your wide at the belly shape too. Um, it just feels like there's no real room for it to move around. Which is not a bad thing. It's actually very comforting feeling. Um, I'm just scraping the sides of the heart thinking that maybe it'll help it to close down. Definitely lowered the crow, so I may have room to clip. But I'm not going to clip because I actually really like it. Um, all right. So day two working on these reeds. I really didn't come up with much from the black guy. I feel like he was too short, too stubby, too far gone up in the tip. I can even look at him now. He's a little bit dry and see... Um, that the the sides, the, the blades up at the top are kind of flaring open. There's just a, a lot of um, unattractive qualities of this reed. So we're going to lay him aside. But this guy, once we got the overlap a little bit taken care of, remade the tip, terrific reed. This guy, same deal. So I... I continue to like your profiler fine as a starting off point, but I definitely did find that I had to recut and rebuild that tip quite a lot to get the result that I wanted. Um, so I super hope that this has been helpful. I'm going to get these sanitized and get them sent back to you, and uh, I will eagerly await um, some more reads from you. We'll see if we can get your, your read making really, really dialed in. Um, thanks so much. Have a great day. I hope this has been helpful. This has been a read repair shop session. Um, you too could have my eyes and my knife on your reads. You can find this information about the read repair shop service on my website, JanetIngle.com, which is also where you can uh, order reads or cane, or you can uh, find my email address and reach out to me with other questions that you would like me to answer or um, ideas for future five minute read maker videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.